this week on Africa Health Check. One of the challenges that uh, our women faced was that uh, um, uh, maternal health delivery. It came and disrupted the way we live. We recap on our debut season. I do see myself um, contributing to the building the creative industry in Africa. We need to stop being nationals and become citizens. And engage in more incredible discussions on our great continent in the coming weeks. Welcome to season two of Africa Health Check. This is a show where we reflect on Africa's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. I am still your host, Hohonta Jampaladi, and I look forward to season two of enriching and thought-provoking conversations. On this first episode of season two of Africa Health Check, we're going to be reflecting on all the discussions we had in season one. We had stories of survival, thriving, and the true African spirit of resilience. We will be reflecting on some of the outstanding stories that we featured here, as well as talking about what you as the viewer can look forward to in season two of Africa Health Check. I'd like to welcome our usual commentators, Dr. Marianne Morethi, who is the current chair of the Department of Medical Microbiology and Immunology and a senior research fellow at the University of Nairobi in Kenya, as well as Reverend Anthony Achampong, who is a pharmacist and a pastor from Ghana. But before we hear from them, let us have a look at this episode's feature. With Africa Health Check, we created a platform where Africans from across the continent and the world told their stories of resilience and active citizenry in the face of a public health emergency that challenged life as we know it and challenged our development trajectory to the core. We saw a spike in cases of gender-based violence. We saw on many television, not only in Uganda, but also other African countries, that there was an increased gender-based violence among most of the women increased challenges with accessing reproductive health services. One of the challenges that uh, our women faced was that, uh, um, uh, maternal health delivery. A collapse of healthcare systems. One issue that we need to look at, as particularly in Africa, is the fact that we need to develop uh, capability into a point where we're not so dependent on other parts of the world. Education severely affected. It came and disrupted the way we live, and particularly for this, the way we learn. There's that relationship that forged by having face-to-face -face meetings and, and lectures. A rise in cases of mental health challenges. It made me change my career because I really needed the counseling, but with the help of my parents, I underwent the situation. At the same time, we saw powerful stories emerging, stories of resilience. It's been really tough on a lot of people. You gotta keep on pushing, you have to figure out how to, uh, how to utilize all the resources you have in your hands. Just know you're not fighting alone, because we're all in this fight. Stories of courage, stories of social responsibility being uptaken. Sur terrain pour sensibiliser, déjà il fallait une sensibilisation de proximité, c'est-à-dire approcher les gens et leur parler de bouche à oreille. Et, et puis il fallait aussi utiliser les médias, notamment les radios communautaires au niveau local, parce que nous n'avions pas assez de moyens et donc. I do see myself um, contributing to the building the creative industry in Africa, um, especially building infrastructures, um, capacities, and if possible, increasing the market share and visibility of everyday African stories, and particularly stories of those forgotten youth, those youth who are trapped in the system. Stories of transformation, stories of innovation. I could see how poverty and peer pressure could push youth, you know, to engage in real-time violence and uh, in the course of that I lost my peers and I saw, you know, uh, people burned alive, you know, stabbed and, and many more. And in the course of that, then I asked myself, you know, do I want to end up this way? Stories of unity, testimonies of survival and being able to thrive against all odds, evidence of humanity and indeed Ubuntu. 
but if it was not this food production we our children couldn't have survived through the covid the children and the local community that is nearby in my view if we are to tell the story of covid 19 in africa i would much rather have it being a story of success and resilient and not that of sorrow and misery hence why i was so happy to be part of this show africa health check when we are actually celebrating the true story of resilience survival and unity in africa there is still uh, sort of a gaping hole a black hole in the development of national policies for the population uh, not just in ghana but how to live in africa as a whole and we are still refusing to believe that the future of africa is the future is, is the youth I have personally learned a lot during my tenure as part of the show through the stories and the features that we had, the people we interviewed. There's still a lot more stories to cover, even more to celebrate, particularly around innovations, increased manufacturing and homegrown procurement avenues that emerged in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Moving forward, these need to be nourished and invested in so that we enhance our self-sufficiency and independence as a continent, we need to be self-reliant. My final message to each one of us across uh, our nations in the continent is that we need to stop being nationals and become citizens. Nationals are people who hold a passport of a country. Citizens are people who engage with their country actively. a powerful summation of the stories that we hosted in last season of Africa Health Check where we were shining a spotlight on the efforts of ordinary citizens and different stakeholders in response to COVID-19 and now for season two we take it a step further and now not only share the stories of resilience survival and thriving but also talking about the way forward where do we go as Africans and as Africa as now we are trying to grow past the COVID-19 pandemic pandemic era to now building resilience and rebuilding all the successes that have been regressed or we've lost as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and that is what we're going to be talking about towards at the end of the show but before I jump into that let me welcome my co-commentators uh, uh, Dr. Marianne and Reverend Anthony Champong. hello hello Gigi hello Gigi nice to see you once again it's been a long time, Dr. Marianne. How have you been? And, uh, fine, thank you. Nice to be back again to talk about some real issues and where we are going. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you so much. And as a frontline worker, what would you say if you were asked to just give a reflection of uh, we are in May right now? So May 2020 versus May 2022. So um, that's a good reflection may 2020 at this time point we were all very scared we were dealing with something that we didn't know and what was even more scary is the unprecedented deaths and also just um, dealing with um, a respiratory tract virus there was an argument is it an, air, an, an airborne is it contact we're washing our hands we're going to the supermarket washing our utensils in the hospitals as this fear and scare uh, how to interact with a COVID-19 positive patient. May 5th, 2022, it's a whole different scenario now. We know the virus, we know how to treat it. Most importantly, we know how to prevent it. And we have the greatest weapon and that is the vaccines. And also now that we have somehow all in a way interacted with the virus, we are seeing less and less numbers of COVID-19 positivity, which is great for us at the, in, a, in a research center, in a hospital centers, because now we can concentrate on other diseases. Trust me, they didn't go away, they're still there. In fact, we're seeing even more numbers of, for example, sexually transmitted infections. We don't know what happened during the lockdown. We are seeing more teenage pregnancies. We are seeing infections that we had not seen before uh, in, terms of, in, in terms of the positivity rate. So we are still quite busy, yeah. but now we know what uh, we are dealing with and how to go forward. So. 
Yeah. Absolutely, Dr. Marianne. And you know, because I also work in sexual reproductive health and rights, it's actually not really shocking that we saw uh, some of the indicators, you know, sort of falling back because there was such limited access to SRHR services and commodities because of COVID restrictions and also just uh, prioritization. So many facilities that offer such services had uh, to be temporarily closed. And uh, I think that's why we are seeing the after effects such as the teenage pregnancy and wanted pregnancies and so on and so forth and these are the things that we're gonna be talking about on the show on how do we regain back uh, uh, the momentum and uh, the indicators uh, that we had recorded successes on uh, as, as, as a continent and as uh, our respective countries. I want to quickly go to Reverend. Today we are reflecting on season one of Africa Health Check. We featured 12 or at least 12 powerful stories. We had features, we had word on the street, and we had uh, panelists joining us. Which story would you say stood out the most for you? To me, I think the coming together of our people, uh, not just our people, mm -hmm. but private public sector collaboration partnership, yeah. uh, going even beyond our borders, international partnership, all in an effort to fight COVID, uh, I was phenomenal, very, very, very uh, commendatory. I, I, I was pleased to hear great stories of people coming together, lending support, supporting one another, giving food away, serving in various capacities, uh, or to help one another, because we all saw that there is a common fight. Um, I, be talking about CDC uh, Africa and their efforts in collaborating with international organizations, uh, regional organizations, mm -hmm. uh, vaccination, and all these things. To me, that was the story, uh, or the stories that impressed me the most. And I mm -hmm. believe that it was one of the cornerstone of our resilience that we are in all in this together. And your survivor is my survivor. No one is 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 alone in this. Uh, it it goes to enforce the saying that a, a healthy people are a wealthy people. A healthy nation is a healthy nation, as uh, a wealthy nation rather. So the story of people coming together from church to the communities uh, to orphanages. Uh, mind-boggling and very, very encouraging. That was that was one of the uh, future stories or the points that I really, really enjoyed. Lovely. I actually do remember the uh, episode that we hosted on public-private partnership. I think it was a really powerful one uh, that we had. Dr. Marianne, what was the one feature or the panelist that we hosted whose story stood out the most for you? Well, um, actually, first of all, the common thread of all the, all the episodes we did was the story of resilience. Everyone that was featured from the panelists to the stories within the, each episode, the common thread or the common theme was the resilience of the people. Really, nothing can put us down despite the circumstances. There was the innovation, people thinking out of the box, and um, for me, what really stood out was the episode on mental health, because, again, we're still dealing with the repercussions of the lockdowns. And um, we've seen now the consequences of not addressing this really important um, aspect in our lives. I mean, can, we are social human beings. We are meant to interact. So someone coming and telling you, lock up, lock down, don't interact, that has taken a toll and that. Uh, episode really spoke to me uh, because of what you were dealing with. Also, within the healthcare um, workers, again, the mental health scene deaths in a very unprecedented levels was also quite uh, ment mentally challenging. So again, that episode really personally spoke to me. So again, resilience, us as African people, I think nothing can put us down. Absolutely nothing can put us down. Well put, uh, Dr. Mary. And we're going to go for a quick break now. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what to expect in season two of Africa Health Check. But for now, let us hear the word on the street. A lot of people say a lot of different things 
about this vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine. A lot would say it's good, and some, a few of them would say it's good, and some of them would say it's not good for other people's health. But according to my own um, experience about that vaccine, I think it's good and it's much better being vaccinated. All the youths and Nigeria, the only one, you should try follow the preventive measure just to secure ourselves. Moreover, this is we only have one. Nobody gets extra life. So we should follow the preventive measure, wash our hands, and also take the right to get the government. I personally think it should be a personal choice and it should be a responsibility for everyone. Uh, if you know that this is an issue that affects me, affects my family, affects my community, you should be able to be responsible and make a decision to go and get vaccinated. Welcome back from the break and of course you've just heard what people on the street had to say. This is the first episode of the second season of Africa Health Check and we were just reflecting on some of the powerful stories that we hosted on this show on the last season but now I want us to touch on what kind of discussions can you as a viewer and follower of Africa Health Check expect for this coming uh, season or for this second season I'm going to start with Dr. Mary Ann you know uh, last season we were more about the response what is happening the statistics the hot zones and uh, what people need to be aware of what kind of discussion should we now be focusing on as we get into uh, uh, the way forward past COVID, but also season two of the show? Well, for me personally, I'd like us to discuss on how to rebuild because uh, again, we've been down for almost two years. Uh, down maybe uh, can be classified in many ways, down health-wise, economically, socially, mentally, and also even spiritually. Actually, because remember, we could not even go to uh, places of worship. So how are we rebuilding ourselves? And once we rebuild ourselves, how do we safeguard our future, our future generations from not ever going through what we went through? Remember, we were, we were using the textbook of what the past uh, past populations did with pandemics such as the smallpox, Black Death, our Spanish flu that happened centuries ago. So I want to make sure that from now, henceforth, century from now, our future generations will learn a lot from us. So we need to be able to have enough publications, enough material out there, build structures, build, I'm very passionate about surveillance and getting to know the next pandemic. What will it be? Will, will it be a virus? Will it be a, a bacteria or another whole new species? So I'm very passionate about that, getting to discover. And from that discovery, we'll be able to then find cure us vaccines to prevent our children, children's children from ever having to go what we went through. Because again, as, as we know, it was not a pretty sight scene, living in fear, not knowing if it's you going to get the, the infection next. And as a healthcare worker, you didn't know who you're interacting with and you could not give your proper care to the your patient the way you've been um, trained to do. So I am passionate about that. Let us talk about rebuilding, resilience, and how we can uh, leave crucial lessons for future generations to learn from. Absolutely, and being very proactive instead of just being reactive towards a, a pandemic or even a crisis, you know. And I think what you're saying is really fundamental because many of these crises, it's not the first time that we're facing a global pandemic, we're facing an economic crisis, but why are we not learning and why are we not building our resilient capacities to ensure that uh, we are proactive and when a tragedy hits uh, our systems are well insulated to ensure that we protect our people from the effects of that so i think that will be a very big point of discussion i'm going to go to reverend anthony achampong your expectations for season two but also just generally moving forward as a continent you know as we are now learning to live with the pandemic or live with uh covid 19 uh, uh, what are your expectations? Um, my expectations are the one number one that we continue conversation uh, on this um, COVID issue because we all have said that we are not out of the woods. Uh, the new variants are coming. 
And a lot of people have not been vaccinated. So I expect this season to continue uh, that advocacy for people to get uh, the vaccine. The vaccines are available, you know, but for uh, misinformation and um, um, how do you call it, uh, fake news exacerbated by social media and all these kind of things, I believe that the forum can can encourage uh, and bring education uh, on the need for people to go out there and receive the vaccines. Uh, secondly, um, what COVID did or has done to 2020, 2021 until now is to expose, expose our weaknesses and vulnerabilities as a continent, you know, so we can build capacity for equitable um, most people who are in the city center, I mean, in the center cities, uh, and, uh, uh, benefited most. But those in the in the villages, in the towns, in fire removed, they suffered. They suffered a lot. So we seize upon the opportunity to discuss health, health in general, because it's it's, it's not it's not only on on on, on uh, pandemics, but. Uh, maternal delivery, all kinds of all kinds of health issues. I believe this is a good forum. This is a good forum to extend our tentacles and deal with issues like Dr. Mariam talked about um, uh, innovation into vaccine uh, productions, uh, talk about the way healthcare workers are trained, uh, health facilities, and uh, having channels of communication and dissemination of health uh, materials and health uh, uh, issues, I think it will do us a lot of good, a lot of good as a continent and as a people. So my expectation in this area, and especially with CDC people coming on board, you know, to, to, to broaden the scope of discussion. So we have uh, an in-depth uh, um, discourse on the subject of health for Africa, because without it, we have no future. Absolutely agree with you, uh, Reverend, and we do look forward to learning a lot uh, while we engage with uh, partners from the CDC. Very briefly, I want you to tell me, in your view, where do you think the focus in rebuilding should be? Should it be the economy? Should it be human and social development? Should it be our health, education? Just one area or sector that you personally feel should be the priority in rebuilding our country's uh, past COVID-19 effects. It will be difficult for me to pinpoint one a little because COVID came and it didn't just impact one area. It impacted food security, it impacted education, it impacted technology, it impacted you know, jobs, businesses, and every other thing. And all these things come together uh, to build a nation. So I would rather uh, challenge our leaders, our opinion leaders, political leaders, religious leaders, uh, uh, to, to, to think uh, and to come with solutions as to how best we can move all our people uh, together. Uh, especially the youth, especially the youth, to define something for the youth to be trained, to be directed, and to be engaged, uh, because the youth okay. is our future as a continent. Absolutely agree with you. I'll take it that you believe a priority focus should be on the youth, the biggest asset that we have in Africa, the present and the future. So if we want to rebuild Africa, let the investments go towards young people and they'll do all the rebuilding that's necessary. Absolutely profound. Dr. Mary Ann, if you were to say there's a, a, a particular sector, not that the others are not important, but where you'd say priority should be, where would you uh, place that priority? I would echo Reverend's words, the youth, and, and to add to that, I'd like also to have more uh, focus on the education sector. We closed, shut down schools in our, my country for a whole year. Children lost a whole year of their lives. I mean, um, the policymakers were saying that doesn't matter. Kids catch up fast, but the repercussions, they're still feeling up to today. Uganda, I know they shut their schools for almost two years. 
kids were made to go back to the farms or working, there were early marriages, of course, as we mentioned, teenage pregnancies. So I'd like us to, uh, if there's a, uh, an area to focus on, yes, the youth, uh, make sure the education sector is safeguarded in a way that it will not have to suffer the effects of uh, of the pandemic uh, or uh, any other lockdown. As we showed from the data, kids were less adversely affected by the virus. So we have to take that advantage and maybe build a, a, around that. And again, that to take a, some discussion. And of course, if you're talking about the youth, we need to have more health care workers. We saw the gaps that we had. We, had, For example, in our setting, in my setting, anyone who was over 58, a medic, they were urged not to come to the hospital, to the research centers. Again, these are the most experienced, the most, um, the most knowledgeable people in our field. So telling them to work from home or do consultations through telemedicine is something else altogether. So can we build up and make sure that we have enough nurses, doctors, in uh, all the cardiacs within the health care uh, centers so that, again, we can cushion ourselves in terms of the overburn, uh, in terms of dealing with future pandemics, and in terms of also progression of our youth and that succession planning. So for me, those two pillars are key. Lovely stuff, Dr. Marianne. And when can we expect some feedback on that COVID-19 nasal spray? Oh, yeah, it's quite exciting. It's now on phase three, which means that it's uh, efficacious, it's protective. Wow. So it's been rolled out in, in different populations to see if it will be able to be protective enough. I can't wait for such a vaccine. No more injections, no more swollen <laughs> yeah. arms, you just yeah. spray. And um, I've seen that uh, some of these nasal vaccines, they'll combine influenza, SARS-CoV-2 virus, and also it'd be mm. killing, a, 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 do you say, killing a bird with two stones or two stones killing one by you know that so <laughs> it will be something quite exciting to roll out and really it's a feature of medicine and that's a positive thing we've learned from covid we can have Absolutely. new technologies and new measures or new ways to do um, uh, get vaccines and medications delivered that's true. And some of the people, the premise for their hesitancy is that they just really don't like needles. So they would like to have more options. So I'm happy that um, the, the world of medical research is trying to look at other alternative methods of um, uh, ensuring that they still issue that vaccine dosage, but in uh, uh, more palatable ways to, to, to different people in the population. Lovely stuff. And just before we wrap up the show, can I just get one word from both of you? Just one word, not a sentence, not a phrase, just a, a one word on your expectations of the season two of Africa Health Check. I'll start with Reverend, your one word. Let's say improvement. Improvement. Powerful. Dr. Marianne, your one word. Discoveries. Improvement and discovery, such really big, gigantic and challenging words. But I certainly hope that uh, through this uh, season of Africa Health Check, we'll be able to meet your expectation. I do invite you to connect with us on our social media platforms. We'd like to hear from you. If you know of stories, if you know of someone, uh, the work that has been done by any community in Africa that should be featured on this platform, please reach out to us. Let us connect. Let us empower power each other let us build the spirit of pan-africanism and indeed shine a spotlight on our resilience as africans as we are responding to covid 19 and now moving past the pandemic learning to live with covid 19 and rebuilding our communities our countries our societies our families all of us have a role to play until we meet again, same time, same place, this is Africa Health Check. Remember that the future is Africa, the future is today.